What is up everybody? The Hunter GT with thehuntergt.com. That's right, go check out the website. Got the rad metal detecting forum over there, full of some rad dudes showing off their finds, talking shop, thehuntergt.com. What is going on today? Well, here it is, the Amphibio Multi from Nocta Macro. The review is up, part one anyways. As you know, this is quite a bit of information to cover in one video. I have been mentioning that I'm probably gonna throw it into two separate videos and that is what I have decided to do. So this one will be covering over the features of it, basically running down the menu, looking at the detector, and part two, we will dive into the tones, the performance, recovery speed, air testing, separation, stuff like that. You know the drill, you've seen my other videos. If not, go hit that subscribe button. What the heck are you waiting for? Go look at my other reviews. I got a ton of them up there. And I pride myself in no script, nothing like that. All this off the top of my head. You guys know I like to babble and like to talk about every little feature. So that is what we are going to do. If you are on the fence about buying one of these, let me tell you, now is the time. A 15% price drop on these. They went from $8.99 down into the $7.50 range now. So if you want to pick one up, I have one guy to call. Heath Jones over at Treasure Mountain Metal Detecting. He is my new sponsor. Um, yeah, pretty much a new sponsor, so to speak. Treasure Mountain Metal Detecting. So you must mention that you're subscribed to the 100 GT and that the 100 GT sent you. So they always have all sorts of little discounts, special type deals going on, and you never know what you're gonna get. So make sure you mention that you are a subscriber to the 100 GT and that the 100 GT sent you his way. So Heath Jones, Treasure Mountain Metal Detectors, a great guy. I appreciate their support. So go hit them up right now. So there it is, the Amphibio Multi from Nocta Macro. Let's check out the box. Seven optional coils to choose from. That's one thing that stands out. That is fantastic that manufacturer is, especially a new manufacturer, fairly new to the game like Nocta Macro. They are producing multiple coils for their machine, concentric and DD. So that is pretty nice to see. Two year warranty, top right corner. New 11 inch coil offers that extra depth you are looking for. So they are going with an 11 inch round coil. It is 28 centimeters. They call it the AF28. New keypad backlight, new slidable armrest. So some neat features there. When depth, speed, and sturdiness matter, the way to go is the Amphibio. So they got a little rhyme there. They got a little paragraph right here. I'm not gonna read all of that. Now they have three different Amphibios right here. You can see the Amphibio Multi on top, multi-purpose, 5, 14, and 20 kilohertz. That's what we're going over today. That is the model we have here. The Amphibio 14, which they're calling a coin hunter, and then the Amphibio 19, the relic and gold hunter, 19 kilohertz right there. So this one covers a low frequency, a 5, and then jumps up to that multi-purpose 14, and then the relic and gold hunting at 19 kilohertz. IP68, waterproof up to 5 meters, 16.4 feet, and they have a row of cool features right here. Pay attention. Excellent discrimination and unmasking ability. Absolutely check on that one. New design coil, that AF28 11 inch DD coil. Advanced beach mode. Now in the beach mode, it will ground balance all the way to salt with just the default pumping. The other modes will stop at 20. Um, with the beach mode, it will automatically go all the way to zero. So a pretty cool feature. A lot of detectors will only go down to like 20 or 40. And then you got to go into all metal mode or into a different mode. This one is no different. It will go down into 20. However, once you're in beach mode, just by cycling through, you can pump the coil and go all the way down to zero automatically with just a quick grab balance. So pretty neat. EUD, extra underground depth. Pretty neat feature right there. We will explain more of that in the next video. Fast recovery speed, absolutely check, especially in three-tone mode. I will go over that as well. It has blazing bonkers fast recovery speed in three-tone mode, 89 gain or lower. Three selectable target ID depth levels, nine search modes, beach, you got cash, you got the deep mode, you have two-tone, three-tone, four-tone, five-tone, so nine different search modes, 2.4 gigahertz wireless headphones, online firmware update so you can connect it to your computer and get those up dates as they roll out a vibration mode in case you have a nice couple picnicking at the park romantically you don't want to disturb that right you want to be polite so it has a vibration mode to go right through the handle keypad backlight and for underwater of course you know you maybe you don't want to use your headphones underwater you don't have 
Um, waterproof headphones, you got the vibration option there. That's what it's for, technically, a center water. Keypad backlight right there, and retractable shaft goes from 30 to 53 centimeters, or inches, I'm sorry, 30 to 53 inches. Uh, what does that break down to? to? Like 75 centimeters up to like 140 centimeters off the top of my head, something like that. Built-in LiPo battery right there. It's a 3,700 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery. You're looking at nine hours in five kilohertz mode and you're looking at 19 hours in the 14 and 20 kilohertz mode so quite a bit of extra juice in the 14 and 20 kilohertz mode if you're using that low five kilohertz mode for those deep silver coins it really punches down deep in five kilohertz you are going to be eating extra battery and you're looking at about nine hours in that frequency all right without further ado what do you say we rip open the box throw it together and take a look all right, here's everything laid out and unboxed. Quite a bit of stuff wrapped inside of that box here. We got the literature here, the user manual. Make sure you read that about five or six times. We got some cards here, code of ethics, how to wash it off if you've been in the salt, um, manufacturer warranty card, 2.4 gigahertz instructions right there. So that is the literature. AF28 coil right there comes with a coil cover built into it right there. I don't know if it comes off. I gave it a good little pry on one corner and it seems permanently attached, so I am not going to mess with it. Five pin mail connection right there on that end. As you can see, it is set up just like that. Extra coil bolts right there. And as far as the coil, it's a light coil. It is not nose heavy, this machine at all. It is 3.7 pounds, however. So it is not a light machine. Um, I've seen guys with this detector say, boy, it's heavy. And they're big muscular dudes. And I've seen skinny guys say, hey, I can use this all day, no problem. So everybody's built differently. Um, it is an ergonomic detector detector for sure. It is not nose heavy. The lithium battery is in the back of the detector right here in this tube and it even has extra battery pack that you can put on the bottom right here to even counterbalance it even more. So it is definitely ergonomic. The batteries are back here and the coil is not nose heavy. So I just want to get that out of the way. It is 3.7 pounds though, something I do want to note. So there is the Velcro strap. I don't use it. it goes right through these two slots right here. The detector itself, the two shafts look at that just a quick little collar locking collar release like that pretty neat it has a line on it see that line that white line if you see that you're getting ready to fall out of the detector on that end up there so if you see that white line you need to push it in just like a centimeter more and then lock it down and then this one here you'll see it has graduations from one two three all the way up to seven inches and you don't want to go past that last line on seven inches you don't want it to come out this way past that if you see the end of that you are liable to be on your way out there in a moment so got a couple rubber washers in there a three amp usb charger right there and see usb be on that end and an eight pin connection right there the coil was a five pin this is an eight pin so you cannot mix them up there is a micro usb cord for the wireless headphones right there you can see the green additions and you can use them wired with that hole right there or you can plug them in with the micro usb right there to charge it there is the off and on button right there and yes they are the green edition with the u right there international charger extra set of bolts right there two boxes that all this stuff came stuffed in right there so let's take a look at the unit here look at this red button here you pop that out and look the cuff just slides back and forth like that isn't it so neat it's like butter you push it back down and look it is nice and tight right there couple screws on the bottom here on this uh, detector stand. Why? Because you can attach an extra AA pack right there. Four AA batteries will go in a little pack that you can, <clears throat> excuse me, purchase separately and give yourself extra time if the battery pack inside isn't going to be enough for you. If those 20 hours, that 19 hours isn't going to be enough, you know, you're going camping for an extended time, going to be out of country with it. Maybe you don't know if you're going to have a chart out in the country, not out of the country, out in the country, out in the fields, you know, and not have enough time camping or whatever, it comes with that extra bit of security there with the extra battery pack. So built like a tank, like I said, hard, hard plastic, hard rubber grip here. Um, it's not foam. It's not cushiony at all. It is a hard rubber grip. As you can see on the front here, it is a nice shiny front. I wish it was made like Gorilla Glass, that 3M 
Corning Gorilla Glass that they use on cell phones or whatever, but it's like a hard, hard plastic, but it scratches a little easy. It comes with a little cellophane type peel off thing. You might want to leave it on there or definitely buy a cover. I will say that is a drawback for me that it, it does, it's black and it's super shiny. So it scratches a little easy, just wiping it off or anything. The buttons are so nice. Listen, they come with a little tactile feedback. They're buttery smooth. They're built like super industrial military quality. That's the only way to describe it. Really nice. Flip it around here and you can see we got the five pin hole right there that says coil. On the other side we have the eight pin which is the battery connector for charging it via the USB. And you can also, you see a headphone symbol there on the left hand side. You can plug in a headphone adapter that's sold separately if you want to use your own wired headphones if you don't like the green edition wireless ones that come with it but look at all the screws on the back the speaker is about the loudest darn speaker i've ever heard on any detector i mean look at it in there it's like home theater quality or something i pinpointed with it at volume 10 without the headphones and boy what a mistake that was it was ultra loud at the park everybody looked at me i was like oh sorry everybody so there it is um like i said 3.7 pounds it it feels like a tank it is not in a bad way though like i said very ergonomic i can swing it all day long no problem um but yeah, there it is, guys. That is everything that is in the box and it comes with the detector. What do you say we throw it together? I'll run through the menu here, check it out, and call it a video. All right, just real quick before we go over the menu, I thought I'd show it all collapsed. That is how it looks, totally collapsed down. So, as you can see, right there. And then we just little pop right there pop right there on that one the bottom one will extend out and then you lock it down and then this one will extend out. i can't do it one-handed it, it, it's a little tight it's not an easy you gotta you gotta give it a little a little force but you just lock them in like that and then you extend it all the way out to fit your needs so there it is pretty hot looking detector all built up right it is pretty darn nice that is for sure what do you say we turn it on run through the menu and check it out all right, here we go. Get your pen and paper out because you're going to need to take notes. I'm going to go through this once and there is plenty to go through. So right away, it is set up for centimeters. We're going to hold down settings and options. Keep it held down. Now with our other finger, we're going to hold on on. And as it's booting up, keep holding down settings and options. Keep holding down settings and options and I in for inches. Now we are set up for inches on our pin pointer. To revert back to the metric system, just keep holding those two as you reboot it up again from off to on and you will be all set to go, all right, for centimeters. So we are now set up for inches. So right away, let's go look over the display first. So we have three different rows, mode, settings, and options. We can control those. It's always gonna be set up with mode. See how I, I move it up and down in the mode? They're all the way on the left, the box is moving. So it's always gonna default to mode. If I want to go into settings row there, the second row over, I hit settings, and now look, I'm going all the way up and down the settings row, and same thing, options, I click options, and I'm going all the way up and down the options row on the right there. So options button here on the right side for the right row, settings for the row right above it, and it defaults out in a minute, watch options. See how it defaults back to the dual lines? Now I'm back over in mode. See how I'm going up and down my modes over there, okay? So that's basically it. Settings, you can click it, click it again to go out. Options, click it, click it again to go out and you're back in mode. So those are your three main sections. Your target ID right in the middle along with your settings, your volume setting, your frequency. Watch target ID will disappear when I click there. Now I'm in my frequencies. I go down to volume. I can adjust my volume and it's going to show up right there in the middle as well. When it disappears it just says target ID. So along the top this is going to be your discrimination row up here. Each of these lines equals two ID. So one, two, three, four. It's set to three disc automatically. Everything's going to be disc three except for Gen Delta, which is zero disc. And then Beach will be disc of 15. So you can see that right there. There are seven lines or eight lines set up right there. And then Cache is going to be disc zero. Everything else is disc three. So each of those lines is two 
discrimination values right there. Along the bottom here, we have F medium. What does that stand for? Frequency. If we go to our frequency, we go to five kilohertz. It says F low for frequency low, F medium for frequency medium at 14, and F high for frequency 20, which is our high frequency right there. So that's pretty self-explanatory right there. Along the bottom, we have our battery indicator here, our depth meter here that has horizontal rows on it right there, and our mineral readout right here here that has horizontal bars just like the battery right there. So the higher it is, the more minerals you have in your soil. The depth, the higher it is. Um, if it's just one bar here that shows up, it's a deep target. If all the bars show up or one's missing, it's a shallower target right there. So that's pretty much the display. Ground balance right here in the bottom right. And then this box will be your warning like pump coil when you're ground balancing or check cable connection or low battery or, or something like that will show up in your little warning box right there. So that's pretty much it. Now, another key combination here, the plus and minus, you have up, down, minus and plus here in the middle. So hold down plus and minus and what happens? Standard, SD for standard. Now I'm in standard ID mode now, which means five kilohertz, 14 and 20. They're going to give you separate IDs on say a dime or a penny. Each frequency will have its own ID scale. Now if I hold them down again, I get NO for normalized, meaning a penny will ring up the same ID no matter if I'm in 5, 14, or 20. So you have standard, SD, hold it down again, and you have normalized. That's the plus and minus. So I usually run it in normalized. I like the same ID across all three frequencies. Uh, I use, you know, different brands and I'm it gets confusing sometimes, so the, the less amount of IDs you have to remember, the better. So that's pretty much that. Let's go ahead and roll down the mode. So what do we got here? We got Gen Delta, which is a all metal mode. You can hear the threshold here. Now notice, I can adjust gain. I can adjust disc or notch. My notch volume, tone break, it goes right down to tone break and threshold and ISAT, right? So there's some options, depending on what mode you're in, certain settings will be available for you over here. Now, these settings, um, they are going to be independent for each mode. So I can go through and set my gain, my disc, my notch, my notch volume for tone, for two tone. They're gonna be all different when I switch down to three tone, like right here. I can go adjust my gain, my disc, my notch, all totally separately between each mode. So it makes it real cool to just thumb back and forth. You can have one mode set up one way, thumb it up, thumb it up real quick, the two tone down to three tone and have different notches set up or different discrimination or different gain settings set up. And it's real neat that you can check a target real quick that way. Um, so all this whole settings row is independent for each of your modes, okay? So I can't stress that enough. So in Gin Delta, it's basically all metal. You can hear the threshold. We can, uh, now a tone break, it has a tone break because everything at 15 or under is gonna be like a grunt. You're gonna get this grunt. Hear that? And if I go higher, above 15 we're getting that zip that all metal zip that we're used to so it's an interesting all metal mode this gin delta it will definitely discriminate ferrous to non-ferrous so and then we can go so we can adjust that tone break wherever say we want that grunt to happen way high up by pennies or whatever well then we can go way up here 70 range and now it's going to grunt You can hear it's kind of a lower tone, basically a lower gruntier tone. So it's kind of a neat thing. And then we have our threshold so we can make that mosquito hum disappear and we can take it all the way up to 99 and make it really come in loud and be overwhelming. Then our last option there, I sat, and this is all for Gen Delta mode only. So I sat here is intelligent self-adjusting threshold. That's gonna make that mosquito noise, you know, the, the highs and the lows of that, it's gonna smooth it out the higher you have your I sat. So it's a way for it to 
recover the peaks and valleys quicker to get it back to your base threshold setting. Of course, that has also to do with what your gain is. You run too high of your gain or you're running your threshold too high, you're really gonna run it incorrectly basically and you're gonna have that too many pops and chatters. You want a nice smooth threshold. ISAT will help you do that, okay? So let's run down to the next one here, two-tone mode. So with two-tone, we can run through gain, we can run through our disc setting a notch. Now I can go through here, see it blinking up there? I can move that blink all the way across the scale, say 30, I can hit select, now it stops blinking, now look what happens when I move it some more, see how it's filling in, hit select again, and it's blinking again, and I can move it, then hit select again, it stops blinking, and that's how you set up your notch, so you know, if I want to remove that notch, I have to remember I set it at 70, so select, oh no I set it at 71, so select, and then while it's blinking, you can go back and start to erase it. So you're gonna have to set it again, and there we go. So see now how it's erasing, because it's not blinking, so I can erase it. So when it's blinking, you're setting the location, and then when it's not blinking, you're setting the actual notch or making the notch disappear at that point, okay? So that's how notching works, you can see it. Now if you run your disc up, you cannot notch back in. If your disc is higher, your notch will start at the last discrimination point. You cannot go back and notch back in. So run disc low, then set your notch how you want it. You cannot notch in, you can only notch out on this Amphibio, so something to note. So there's notch, and then with your notch volume, you can actually set your notches. So they're usually zero, they're muted, right? You don't wanna hear a notch. Well, with this Amphibio, you can set the notch volume from five all the way down to muted. So pretty neat feature there. And then your tone. So I'm in two tone mode, right? So I have two Z sections here. Add a zero to this in tone mode. This is your hertz, your frequency of your tone. So 15's a low bass tone, that bomb, bomb, bomb. And then if I raise it, I just hold down plus, I can raise it all the way up to 80, which is gonna be like a, a high mouse squeak, basically. So this is your tone, is hertz, basically, on the Sorry about that, the uh, recording stops out there if it overheats. So pitch at 15 is gonna be a low tone, all the way up to 80 is a high tone. So you notice I have two zones here that I can set, Z1 and Z2, right? So one's at 15, one's at 33. Now if I go down to my tone break, that's because my tone breaks at 15. So 15 and under is gonna be a 15 tone. 15 and above, is gonna be what? Let's go back up, 15 and above is gonna be a 33 tone. I usually run it high at about a 60 or so. I like that mouse squeak, so I usually run my, my tone way up high. So that's the tone. The tone volume right here is how loud I want each section, each of my Z sections to be. So I can mute a Z section here or I can have it totally loud. So that's based on my tone break. So I only have one Z section here now. I'm in two tone, but you notice one disappears when I go from here to here. My tone volume, I have two sections to do. So my tone break, my break point's at 15, where this line is. So Z1 is over here, and Z2 is everything past 15 now, okay? So remember that. Z1 right now is at 15 and under, Z2 is 15 and above, but I only have Z1 because I only have one break point here for two-tone mode. So now when I go back up to tone volume, this is my volume for everything above that 15, and Z1 here is muted, it's everything at 15 and under. See how that works? And then when I go to tone, this is my tone for Z1, which is 15 and under, and I can change this to wherever. So it's still 15 and under, but I can change that iron tone to be a high pitch iron tone or a low grunt right here. Remember, tone is the pitch, and I have two Z sections. So basically that's how that works, and then if I go down to three tone, four tone, watch what happens when I go to five tone. Look, I have five Z sections to work with, one for each of my tones. So I can set five different tone breaks, five different tone pitches, five different tone volumes. So say I want iron to be muted, I can mute iron, then say, oh, I want my nickels to come in full blast. 
Here's where pull tabs are, so I can mute that. Here's zinc pennies, I'll go ahead and listen to that, and then I'll go ahead and listen to all my copper, and then I can go adjust those breaks, each of my five breaks, wherever I want them to be. See, this one's at 30, I can adjust it up or down. And then this, what my next third one is gonna be at 66. And remember, there's only four, because anything 85 here is Z4, 85 and up is gonna be my fifth tone. So that's where the break point stops. So that's why there's four sections there. So it's pretty neat. And then you, you don't have a threshold in any of the disc settings that, or the tone settings here. So it goes right down to ISAT, which I always run at zero in my discrimination modes, my tone modes. Only in Gen Delta do I run ISAT or in cache mode. In cache mode, your ISAT's gonna be adrift because in Cache mode, listen, it is like pinpoint mode. It is non-motion. So see, in cache mode, it is non-motion. It's like you're holding down the pinpoint button, basically. So then we have deep mode here, which is the deepest by far. We can set everything up there. Deep mode, it has two Z sections here for you. And then you get a single tone break. So it's a two-tone mode only in deep mode. Um, and then we go up to beach. Beach automatically gives you a 15 discrimination to knock out, you know, the extra pops and chatters of high mineralization. So it knocks out all of iron. Like I said in the beginning, in beach mode, you can ground balance all the way to zero salt. It doesn't stop you at 20 like these other modes will. And then we have 99 tone, which will give you not 99 breaks or tone breaks or anything. It only gives you one. 0 to 15 is going to be your tone break. So you can't even adjust your tone. You can't adjust your tone, your tone break on this one at all. Just tone volume. So your tone is going to go from 0 to 15 ferrous. And then everything above 15 is going to get an ID for a tone. So it's not really 99 tone. It's more like, what, 74 tones? 99 minus 15. So... It's more 74 tones, but you get all of these tones up here are going to be individual 74 different tones and then 15 and under is all going to be iron. So that pretty much covers everything. Um, you know, we'll go back up to five tone. I'll show you, I'll show you again here. You know, you got your notch. You can set your notch as your notch volume and then you have those Z sections. So these are what you pay attention to. They correspond to each of the four tone modes. So I go to three tone. Now you see I have three Z sections. Four tone, I get four Z sections five tones I get five Z sections unless I go to my break it minuses one Z because your last break is just everything above it okay so now over to the options row on the right side here we have frequency and we adjust that by left or right here 5 14 and 20 we have our volume is the next thing down we can go from 10 all the way down to muted not that you would want to and then next is brightness. We have C5 through C1, which means continuous. It's always on. C1 being the lowest brightness, C5 being all the way up. And then we have five through zero. Zero being off and then one, two, three, four, five. It will time out in these modes and then go dark. In C1, two, three, four, five, it stays on continuously. It will eat up your battery a little quicker, obviously. Vibration mode here, read the manual. Um, it, it has different lengths of vibration and like a double vibration, a triple or, or a, a long vibration. So there's different settings here for vibrate mode for when you're underwater or you just don't wanna use audio at all you have those available to you, zero being off. Depth, intermediate, high, and low. This will give you depth ID readings for those three different ranges. If you only wanna read low, shallow targets, put it on low. You wanna read intermediate and low, put it on intermediate, I'd leave it on high, because I do wanna see an ID on those deep targets if possible. So tracking right there, this detector does have auto ground balance tracking, something I would only use in Gen Delta, um, I wouldn't really use it in disc mode at all. So read the manual on that. Boy, my hand's shaking. I'm squeezing my camera too hard. Frequency shift. You have five different frequency shifts to cycle through if you're picking up interference. That is not the same as frequency change from 1540 to 20. This is just a little shift. So it would send you from like 
5 to 5.1, 5.2, or 14 to 14.1, 14.2. They're just little minor shifts in case you're picking up interference from another amphibio running the same frequency or a, a pinpointer or interference from local EMI or whatever. You got that frequency shift. Save and FD. I go left here. FD for factory default. I hit select, it's gonna run through it and factory default it. I click over here to SA, and this is just the right and or plus and minus buttons here. It's gonna default right there at, at the two lines. I go left or minus for FD. I go right or positive for SA. SA means save your settings. You just hit select, it's gonna save all the settings that you just changed and, and did over here. Watch what happens, Let, let's just go ahead and hit it for you. I'll show you what happens. Um, so save, hit select, see the bar go across the top. It'll do that here for about 10, 15 seconds. And when it stops, you're all saved. Same thing with factory default. If you go over to the FD and do that, same thing. It does the bar a few times, about five, 10 seconds, and then it just, everything is reset like it's straight out of the box for you, okay? And the last thing there is gonna be wireless. For your headphones, OF is off, and then you have zero to 19. So 20 different frequencies you can run your headphones on if you're getting interference from somebody else running an Amphibio with the same green headphones as you. So there it is, guys. I think I ran through everything pretty successfully. Um, I'm sure I'm left something out. Leave comments down below. I leave my comments open. Um, I hope you enjoyed this part one. I. <laughs> Definitely, I try to remember all this stuff off the top of my head. I've had this detector about two months, 100 hours in for sure. So I'm trying to just cut through this all off the top of my head. Um, I know it's a long video, pushing a half hour basically. Bear with it. Part two coming up. We'll really dive into this. We'll listen to the tones. We will do recovery speed, separation tests, um, some air testing. We'll run it through the workhorse paces, so to speak. So there it is. The whole menu, the Amphibio unboxing, part one complete. Hope you enjoy the video. I will see you for part two in about 48 hours, roughly, I figure. So there it is. I will see you on the next video.